Shalom everybody, 501c3. This video is a warning to get out of the church immediately. If your church has a 501c3, they have lost their freedom of speech. They belong to the state. This is when church meets state. It's a tax exemption form. Yahuwah and Yahusha are not in the churches. We are the third temples that the Ruah Kadesh dwells in. Churches are pagan, it's all sun worship. There's steeples that they're not supposed to have that are in Levit Leviticus that are sun pillars. Statues breaking the second commandments. Churches teach a different doctrine than we're supposed to know. Christianity is all sun worship and it's all pagan. Google 501c3 and do your own research. The church pastors were recruited, 28,000 pastors were recruited from FEMA, from FEMA and Department of Homeland Security. They work for the government. If a natural disaster happens or anything happens, people are gonna run to their church and they're gonna take you to FEMA camps. Okay, this is a warning. Get out of the church. It's run by the government. 501c3. Tax exemption forms. That's exactly what it is, so they don't have to pay taxes. How do you think they stay tax-free? Even though they don't have to, because there's a law stating that they're already tax-exempt. Churches are religious organizations that accept governmental authorization for financial gain, for permission to assemble, etc., are then controlled by the state. They invariably become tools of the government carrying out the agenda of rulers and spreading state propaganda. Church members themselves often demand their church obtain state recognition in order for their tithes and offerings to be deductible from their personal income tax reports. The classification 501c3 is a tax-exempt status for religious or charitable organizations in the United States. While this article repeatedly refers to the particular classification, the warning crosses international boundaries. Any religious organization that is recognized as such by the national government comes under the control of that government. It is then an arm of the state and must comply with state policy or lose their desired recognition. In Bob Jones University versus United States 461 US 574, the US Supreme Court noted the following about the government's intent purpose for the 501c3. The court asserts that an exempt organization must demonstrably serve and be in harmony with the public interest, must have purpose that, comfort, that comports with the common community conscience, and must not act in a manner affirmatively uh, at odds with the declared position of the whole government. Taken together, these passages suggest that the primary function of a tax exemption organization is to act on behalf of the government in carrying out governmentally approved policies. While it may be appropriate for many nonprofit organizations to waive their right to intervene in political campaigns, I'm sorry, I lost my place, in, in, politically, in political campaigns or to influence legislation, is, the right, is it the right thing to for the church to do? Waiving such rights is to waive one's freedom of speech. Waiving one's right to influence legislation is especially problematic. The inevitable results has been that the church has abandoned its responsibility to influence their elected representatives to craft legislation that is biblical and becomes, and that comports with constitution. The unchurched and even those who are openly hostile to the church have taken over that influence and are now seeing to it that their legislator craft statues which are unbiblical, immoral, and unconstitutional. 
one need not look far to see the church's acceptance of the 501c3 and its significant restrictions has had devastating consequences to not only the church but the entire nation when a church accepts the 501c3 that church waives its freedom of speech waives its freedom of religion waives its right to influence legislators and legislation they craft waives its constitutionally guaranteed rights is no longer free to speak to the vital issues of the day becomes controlled by a spirit of fear that if it doesn't toe the line with the irs it will lose its tax exempt status it becomes a state church the church in america today is by and large not speaking to the vital issues of the day the church has been effectively silenced there has been a chilling effect upon the church's freedom of speech no fear of irs retribution should the church get out of line the inevitable result in a moral downward spiral in the culture as the church stands mute this did not happen by accident but by design and is something of relatively recent design churches were added to irs code 501c3 in 1954 all one needs to do is analyze who is responsible for sponsoring the congregational bill to include churches in 501c3 and it should become apparent that his agenda was not to empower the church but to silence the church the church is the moral compass of society no it's not okay I wanted to read this to you there we go Sub submission to state for monetary gain churches value their official 501c3 status more than the truth as presented in scripture if there were no other reason this alone would be sufficient to identify these organizations as synagogues of state i'm going to repeat that churches value their official 501 501c3 status more than the truth as presented in scripture if there were no other if there were no other reason this alone would be sufficient to identify these organizations as synagogue of satan but there is more when a church incorporates a 501c3 entity with the government it agrees to be bound by all the rules and laws governing 501c3 corporations a church which has filed a 501c3 application has agreed to forego its constitutional right to practice religion without government interference a church that has built boundaries around itself by 501c3 rules has contended to diminish yahuwah's law in favor of private civil law for example by agreeing not to speak out and campaign against morally corrupt politicians they do this in order to enjoy an exemption from taxes to which they were immune to in the first place it is for this reason that world's last chance has been urging all faithful believers to flee organized religions regardless of the amount of truth that any individual church has it is truth that is mingled with error yahuwah's truth and faithful followers will have nothing to do with babylon should not be assumed however that all of the blame lies with a handful of church leaders at the very top of each denomination individual church members are as guilty as the leaders because because often it is the members themselves that pressure the leaders to incorporate a 501c3 entities again the motive again the motivation is purely financial while churches may technically be tax exempt the members donations in tithes and offerings cannot be deduced from their personal income tax reports unless they can prove to the satisfaction of the irs that their charitable donations were given to a legitimate church 
Although there is no requirement to do so, many churches seek recognition of exempt status from the IRS because such recognition assures church leaders, members, and contributors that the church is recognized as exempt and it qualifies for related tax benefits. For example, contributors to a church that has been recognized as tax exempt would know that the, the contributions are tax deductible. Sadly, truth is sacrificed on the altar or for personal gain. Truth is sacrificed on the altar of personal gain. This is a vital issue to the last generation. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mark chapter 8 verse 36 and 37. All organized religions that have submitted to the government for financial gain or temporal security are a part of Babylon and will in turn become persecuting powers as depicted in prophecy. John the Revelator was shown a beast ridden by a great whore. And the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup filled with abominations and the filthiness of her whoring. And upon her forehead a name written, a secret, Babel the Great, the mother of the whores and of the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the set-apart ones and with the blood of the witnesses of Yahusha, and having seen her, I marveled greatly and marveled. And I heard another voice from the heavens saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues, because her sins have piled up to reach the heavens, and Elohim has remembered her unrighteousness. This is 501c3. Shalom, everybody.